Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to do an American style hibachi on the Lodge Sportsman's Grill. Y'all stay tuned. might ask me uh, after, especially after you watch this video where did this recipe come from and uh, I'll have to admit I was driving home today going what the heck am I gonna make for dinner and uh, I was thinking about using that sportsman's grill you know like a hibachi so I uh, started coming up with some ideas came up with some uh, couple you know like the basics I right, I want to do some uh, some chicken and some veg uh, skewer style, like a, a, if you watch a, a previous video on Sportsman's Grill, I alluded to we had tried this before, but I wanted to do it a little bit more special. So I got in the, so I was in the grocery store, looking around, walking up and down the aisles, and uh, this is what I came up with. So y'all be sure to stick around and see how it turns out. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We got some veggies skewered up here, and I got these skewers, this little pack here. They're uh, they're really nice, the flat ones. I got, the, I think I got these at Walmart. No, I got these at uh, I got these in the grill department at Lowe's. They're flat. They even got a little grill. <laughs> got a little Weber kettle grill burned into the tips of them. So grilling department Lowe's is where I got these, and they're flat, which is what you need. So you don't have to worry about your items spinning around on them. So we got some uh, Cubanello pepper and orange bell pepper, which, you know, both of these uh, Mrs. Backwoods hates, so she told me don't let them touch. I got some yellow squash. I got some uh, uh, portobello mushrooms. Shiitakes would be uh, great um, for this dish. Just use whatever you got. So we're just going to go ahead and drizzle those little olive oil on all sides and then we're gonna do something that you might not expect so we're gonna turn those this little this little if you haven't got one of these little squirt bottles yet uh, for your oil I would highly recommend it these things uh, are off you know used in uh, all your restaurants and uh, since I've started using it here, uh, cooking in, uh, in the backwoods, I've loved them ever since. You save a lot of oil, you don't uh, waste as much. Okay, so then right over here, hiding out, we have your Rayman noodles. All right, ramen noodles, whatever you want to call them. And this is the Oriental flavor, all right? So we're going to go ahead and uh, open one of those up and we're going to look uh, inside there and we're going to grab that seasoning pack. Oh yeah, you know what that is guys. How many of us have eaten that? Alright, I'm going to go ahead and open that up and make sure we got a good coating on our veg. And we're going to just lightly, you know this stuff is pretty strong, okay? So we're just going to lightly dust our veg with one of our seasoning packs from the Rayman noodles. All right, you don't want to go crazy with this because this amount I'm going to use probably maybe just about a quarter of the pack or so. All right, so those are ready to go. Okay, so now for our uh, meat. In this case, it's chicken. And in this bowl, I have been marinating this in coconut milk and ginger, okay? Uh, fresh grated uh, ginger in here. If you don't have uh, fresh grated, use some, use some. Go ahead and use some powdered ginger. Um, grated ginger is kind of expensive. 
Or we use some fresh ginger here, or you can even use uh, ginger oil. Okay, my wife's all into the oils, so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, start skewering these guys. And they do have the skin on them, and I, I don't know how that's gonna work. Whether the these uh, skewers are gonna be really sharp enough to skewer the skin. We'll give it a shot. They're, they're kind of slimy now that they got that coconut milk on them. I'm hoping we can get the skin. So, doesn't look like it. Okay? Going to be pretty tough to uh, get through the skin. So we'll just go ahead and pull the skins off of them. Save those for our stock pot. And then we'll uh, just go ahead and skewer these guys up. I'm going to put about four on each one. Pull those skins off we'll finish them all up we might just grill those skins by themselves so I what I did by I, I deboned the the thigh and um, cut it in quarters but you kind of want to keep a uh, equal size pieces and that was kind of dangling so kind of get them on there as good as you can. This one here is kind of giving me some trouble. But if you have to poke him like two or three times to keep him on there, I didn't say this was going to be easy, right? Um, I have to kind of weave them. You can also use a boneless, skinless chicken breast. I did last time. It seemed to be a lot easier. But these are going to have a lot more fat and a lot more juice into them so there you go so we'll finish all of them up we'll put them on our pan and get them ready for the grill. so I haven't put any seasoning on those other than the coconut milk and the uh, the ginger so I'm gonna go ahead and take the remaining part of our packet of our Raymond seasoning and put it on both sides of the chicken and I did figure out how to get those uh, on there with the skins just don't try to pierce the skin let's go through the rest of it so hopefully we'll get some crispy bits of the skin so the rest of the pack Raymond seasoning don't get crazy that stuff's pretty salty now our Raymond we're gonna go ahead and cook both are remaining with only one seasoning pack but both uh, packs of noodles and you're going to want a pack of noodle for each person you're serving uh, this is uh, pretty much for going to be for two two people a really good nice size meal so these things are great uh, everybody knows Raymond noodles are great okay our sportsman's grill is really hot but we're gonna keep wiping that thing down with some oil this one's new so it doesn't have a real great seasoning on it yet but it's nice and hot. I got the damper door closed all the way down because I don't want this to go too fast. Okay, and we're going to start it out with the things that take the longest. And that's going to be the chicken. We're probably going to get some flare-ups. So I'm going to keep my pan handy. In case I need to pull them off. I do notice uh, that this grill is way hotter in the back than it is the front. So notice that the ones closest to me are not cooking as well as the others. So we'll switch them around uh, the other way. Getting beautiful color on them. At this point, they're starting to look done. So I'm gonna go in and start testing them. 
Uh, we're looking for about 155. They're getting very close. They're at like 130. These smaller ones over here on this side, uh, they're almost all done. 151, 152. So if you don't want dry chicken, stop at 155, 160, because they're going to carry over some heat. So we're going to be taking the last one with the smaller pieces off here very soon. But just like when I do chicken wings, I want them all to be perfect. And it doesn't take long for them to start reaching temperature. So as soon as they're all consistently 155 or better, then take them off. So the ones that are starting to reach temperature now, I'm going to go ahead. This is some sweet chili sauce. It's uh, found in the Asian aisle in your grocery store. So we're going to go ahead and start give them a little paint of that real quick on, on all sides. And this is uh, just got a touch of spice, but mostly uh, sweet. And that's going to give a nice... Uh, crust on them and make a mess out of your grill that you'll have to burn off. Just using a wet paper towel to kind of get all that sticky mess off of there before we put on our veg. That did a pretty good job. See, we cleaned our grill a little bit, so we're going to put on some of the, our veg now. It's still pretty hot. I did open the damper door up because the coals are starting to burn down a bit. So I'm going to put the things that are going to take the longest on uh, first, which is the peppers. So we'll go ahead and put them on and give them a few minutes head start. Okay, it's been a couple minutes. Go ahead and put our mushrooms on. They're pretty big. They're going to take a little while too. These squash will only take a couple seconds. So we're going to save those for last. So you remember I had this door cracked a little bit, but as the coals are burning down and we're getting the veg on, I'm just going to go ahead and just slide it out of the way and give it full air under there. And we can always slide it back in if it gets too hot. Those coals are really burning down now. Now. Yeah, these flat skewers make it very easy to keep your your veg on where you can turn them on all four corners and as long as you cut them square you got four corners to turn them to okay starting to get a little nice little sear on my mushrooms very easy to turn those are starting to go good so now time to put on the squash Anybody any questions about it? Does the damper door do any good? Uh, make any difference? It definitely has uh, come up to heat since I removed the damper door 
all the way. So I'm going to put it on back about half the way right now. They're cooking a little fast. Okay, I'm liking where those mushrooms are at right now. So I'm going to put them over here on our foil. Digging where those guys are at right now. Nice uh, char on them. So, just waiting on the squash. And those flat skewers make it easy to turn them without them spinning around. Time to plate it up backwoods gourmet style. First thing we'll do is take a little bit of our sweet chili. We're just gonna drizzle that across the plate. Just like that. I'm gonna come in with our ramen noodles, ramen noodles, whatever you wanna call them. Okay, leave them long, don't bust them up. Alright. Smelling right in the middle. Alright, so then we're going to come in here and uh, de skewer some of our squash, de skewer some of our peppers, some mushrooms. Okay. Want those beautiful veggies all on the plate. Here's a little bit of our uh, cubanellos over there. Right on top of all of that. Got a nice two beautiful chicken skewers. And a little bit of green onions. Beautiful. Tasty. Hey, it's made with ramen noodles. So I'll tell you what guys, that dish was absolutely awesome. Probably the best plate of ramen noodles I've ever had. So I guess we could call these backwards gourmet ramen noodles. Uh, if you got a better uh, name for it, leave it in the comments right down here, and uh, maybe we'll rename the dish. Hey guys, just want to take a minute to remind you guys that we have our new Amazon store up. Uh, we'll leave this the link down in the description box right down here. You can click on that, save that to your favorites, okay, for all your holiday shopping, because we got a bunch of great outdoor cooking and outdoor related items for gift ideas for your outdoor cook right there on the Backwoods Gourmet Amazon store. I'd also like to let you guys know that if there's something that you want from Amazon that's not on our store just click it right on the tab right up in the search bar and search it through there. You can buy anything on Amazon right through our store. Thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button right over there. To see our last video, check it out right up here. And for a whole playlist of cooking on the Lodge Cast Iron Sportsman's Grill, check it out right up here. We'll see you next time.